We're looking at the system of masses as it falls. And we want to find everything about it without using dynamics, without using the sum of the forces equals ma. We're going to use kinetics. We're going to look at energy. And so what happens is these two blocks lose potential energy. And that potential energy is changed into kinetic energy and its motion. But not completely, because a significant amount of energy is lost to heat through friction on the bottom here. And so let's take a look at the first question. Let's look at this box sliding along the surface at 30 degrees. Sorry about the drawing. And so we recognize there's two, three forces, force of gravity. There's a tension. And there's a normal force. Oh, and very importantly, pardon me, there is the force of friction. So we want to find the work done as this falls two meters. As this falls two meters, this will slide across the surface two meters and drop delta H of one meter because the sine of 30 degrees is one half. And so the first question, we want to find out what is the work done by friction. What the question says is, what is the heat liberated? But it is through friction that kinetic energy is changed to heat. And so this is going to be the force of friction times the length that it travels. So what's the force of friction? That's the coefficient of friction, which is 0.6 times the normal force. In order to find the normal force, we look at what's going on in the perpendicular direction. That's the direction the normal force is acting in. And we recognize, ah, yeah, the sum of these forces in the perpendicular direction must equal zero. It's not accelerating this way. And so, therefore, the normal force in this direction must equal the force of gravity in the other direction, uh, but not the entire force of gravity, not the parallel component, only the perpendicular component. So right here, this is the force of gravity, mg, times cosine of this angle here. And this angle is the same as this one, 30 degrees. I can check and make sure I'm right, because as this, if this angle went to 0, the perpendicular would become vertical and would be equal and opposite to gravity. So that would become 1 and then the normal force would be the same as gravity. Great. So that is cosine of 30, which is 0.87. And so we've got 2 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared times 0.87, which is about 17.4 newtons. That's the force of friction acting on this two kilogram mass as it slides down the plane. So the force of friction is then this normal force times 0.6, which is about 10.4 newtons. Okay, and then the work is just that normal force times the distance it moves, which is 2 meters, which comes to be 20.8 newton meters is a joule. OK, so what is the change in potential energy? Well, both of these masses are losing potential energy. The change in potential energy of the system is going to be change in the potential energy of the 1 kilogram mass plus a change in potential energy of the two kilogram mass. So for the one, it's just going to be uh, one kilogram, mgh, one kilogram times 10 meters per second squared times two meters that it falls. Plus for the second mass, we have two kilograms times gravity times the distance it falls. Now it moves two meters, 
but because the angle is 30 degrees, this is only a one meter drop. And so this winds up being 20 kilogram meters per second, that's kilogram meters squared per second squared, that's a joule. So that's 20 joules plus 20 joules is equal to 40 joules. So 40 joules of potential energy are lost in the process. We're going to get 40 joules of energy back, but not just in kinetic energy because we've already established that 20.8 joules are lost in the form of heat through friction. So what's left over? So the amount of kinetic energy is just that 40 joules minus the 20.8 joules lost to heat which is going to be 19.2 joules. So that final kinetic energy must be the kinetic energy of one plus the kinetic energy of two. But luckily they're both going the same speed because they're connected by the rope. So it's just one half. We could say m1 v1 squared plus m2 v2 squared. But because they're both moving at the same speed, we can say m1 plus m2 times v final squared. So that's three. We have three halves kilograms times v final squared. So our 19.2 joules is equal to three halves kilogram v final squared. Um, to me, very important to recognize units. This is a joule is a kilogram, it's a newton meter or a kilogram meter squared per second squared. We like that we can cancel these kilograms and we end up with then v final squared is then equal to 12.8 meter squared per second squared. And so then what is v final? We need the square root of 12.8 and it will be meters per second, square root of meters squared per second squared. And so I can look at this and say, all oh, right, I know that three squared is nine and four squared is 16. So it's gotta be about 3.5. And if you use your calculator, you'll wind up with 3.58 meters per second. So that's the speed that this has after it falls two meters. In order to find the final answer, we will need to use a kinematic equation. And this is accelerating at a constant acceleration over some distance s. And it begins at some velocity v naught, which we're glad is zero. And so now we can say, right, the acceleration is equal to v final squared over two times the distance. Okay, the final velocity squared we already have, that's 12 point eight meters squared per second squared and two times the the distance that's going to be four meters okay it, the units are nice meters meters we have meters per second squared and we end up with three point two meters per second squared must be the acceleration of the system as it falls